Hello, my brothers. So this is series 167. <clears throat> and we're still talking about spiritual gifts. And this is this is the last portion of uh, chapter 12, which is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 27 to 31. And this is where Paul talks about the body of Christ. He talks about the members, uh, your gifts. <clears throat> It's all adds up to one thing. All your, your your gifts are a part of the body of Christ. And um, in one uh, series 167, we talked about, we gave a parable of the body itself, the human body, and the eyes and the ears and the, the heart. But now we're going to talk about those spiritual gifts that God deals with as far as being a part of his body, the spiritual body of Christ and God with the Holy Spirit guiding us. And so um, let's just start at 27. And it says, all of you together are Christ's body. We all Christ's body. And each of you is a part of it. And in anybody that joins the body of Christ, be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. He becomes a part of he becomes a part of the body of Christ. He becomes a part of the royal family of God. And so, therefore, when we start talking about gifts, this better explains the body that he was human body that he was talking about. So 28 says, here are some of the parts God has, uh, has, anoint, uh, has appointed for the church. The first one is, is an apostle. apostle. Apostle is one that, just like the 12 apostles, he, they, were, they were the one that was doing the really dirty work, the groundbreaking work, going everywhere. And telling people about Christ, those are those, that is a, that is a gift that God has given certain people, and it is a part of the body of Christ, a, a very necessary part. Number two, it says, uh, "Oh, prophets." Now we talk about the prophets, the ones who after they, 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 they the, the 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 word has been given, the the the, the seed has been planted. These prophets are the ones who nourish these people. They tell them what they're doing wrong. They tell them what they're doing right. They they let them know. It's like a guideline. They keep you in line with the word of God. And then we have the teachers. The teachers are one that has so much knowledge of God. And they better know how to teach you the word of God so that you can better understand. And then number four, we have those who do miracles. As we said before, these are the ones that God has given the power to heal the sick, to heal the brokenhearted. But these are all one part of the body. You cannot do without, you cannot have one and do without the other. All of them work together. And this is what Paul is trying to teach us. We all must work together in love. Love is what glues us together, keeps us together in unity. And then um, number five says, those who have the gift of healing. Now, who, we, we, now we got people that can heal folks. Uh, and so... We have people that today, they still pray and heal folks. They still have that power going on today. It never stopped uh, uh, existing. It still is present now. A lot of people say that the healing is not healing. We don't heal no more. But that's a, that's, that is a false narrative. Yes, we do. Healing is for today. And number six is those who can help others. This is the act of love. 
These are little small things that, that people just look overlook. And this is an act of love, helping people. If you need clothes, they give you clothes. If you need food, they give you food. Um, whatever need is that you have, there are people that help you fulfill those needs, especially the poor. And um, then number seven, those who have the gift of leadership. We have the gift that God has given certain people to be leaders. And nobody gave you that but God. But you have a mind to lead. And those are very important because leaders like Moses, like Aaron, and um, Joshua, they led people the right way. Because why? They had a relationship with God that was so great that they obeyed God at his every command. This is what the, every gift that I'm telling you right now must have the gift of obedience. Because without that, you can never do the work of God properly. And then uh, number eight says, those who speak in unknown tongues. Tongues are a very important entity because tongues is, is a relationship, a, 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 a speech relationship between just you and God with nobody else. Just you and God. You go, that, go straight to the throne room of, of grace, talking to God in unknown tongues. Unknown tongues is a form of a language, of different languages, like on the day of Pentecost, when all the people, pe Peter was in there preaching to the people, and the, and, and the Holy Ghost came in like a rushing mighty wind, and it touched everybody in there. They began to speak in different languages, not their own language, in different languages. And this is what made people believe that God was God. Because they heard their friends speaking in different languages. And they understood what they were saying. And then they have the utterance of tongues, which nobody really understands. But a person that can really understand what they're saying. And, and that just in an utterance. Or da -da 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 -da, just like that. Only people that have got that gift to interpret it can interpret what they're saying. And that's, that's normally a special gift. That's for the body of the church. Um, and then, uh, number eight, I said number eight. Okay, verse number 29. Uh, are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Um, number 30 says, do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown tongues? Do we all have the uh, ability to interpret unknown, tongue, unknown tongues? Of course not. Not everybody can do all of these things. That's why it's so, so important for you to stay in your lane. If God give you that gift, stay in that gift. Don't try to go over here and try to, if you're a prophet, don't go over here and try to be a miracle worker, because that's not maybe not your gift. He didn't give you that. You stay in what God gave you. That's what makes the body work. Um, working on the job. I was just a carpenter, okay? We had a leader. He was the lead carpenter. He read the blueprints. Okay, I couldn't read the blueprints, but he could. So he was a leader in blueprints and building that building. And so I had to do what I knew what to do. I couldn't go and if, if he was sick, I couldn't take over uh, what he could do because I didn't have the knowledge to do that. You know, that was not my talent. My not was not my gift. So we can't just jump in somebody else's gift and expect for it to work. We're going to make a mess of things. And this is what Christ is trying to tell us. Don't jump in someone else's gift when you are not called to do that. Very important, very important. Number 31 says, uh, so you should earnestly desire the most helpful gift. 
But now let me sh let me show you a way of life that is best of all. And this is the power of loving one another. That's the greatest gift of all, is to love one another. Because this is the only way any of these gifts can work. It's only through love. The love of Christ. Christ came with all the gift that Christ had. His gift was no good unless he could love his love God, love his neighbor, and love his enemy as well. Jesus is the one that did it the best. He was the best leader of all as far as doing that. But his apostles followed him, and they did it well. They did it just like just like Paul said, you follow me as I follow Christ. Christ told them, you follow me as I follow God. You see, so everybody has to follow somebody. Just be obedient. That's all to the word. And um, now I'm going to read the footnotes for you. Um, I have a very good scripture for you. Oh, my God. Uh, the footnote says um, 27 through 28. These are spiritual gifts. Paul described the foundations of the different parts of the body of Christ. He seemed to give them in uh, give them in order of their importance because he says first, second, and third. But Paul has been writing about the importance of all parts of the body. So he is probably thinking about the way that people become Christians. Then, then, he, then he taught uh, taught about the way that people make progress in their faith. Number one, apostles give gi apostles gave the message about Jesus Christ. Number two, prophets continue to work because they prophets continue to work because they made them spiritual strong, spiritually strong. Number three says teachers gave them more information and helped them to understand their faith more better. Um, Paul has already mentioned miracles and powers of healing in 1 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. He added the power. He added, he no, he adds the power to help other people. Christians can help in all kinds of particular ways. A person who organizes things is like a person who guides a ship into the harbor. It is the same word for a pilot. It's the same word for a pilot who makes this aircraft land safely. So, as an administrator of the church would, a person with this gift give wise advice to the whole church. And, and what it's saying here, if you're going to be an administrator of the church, man, that's very important stuff right there. Because you have to be very wise. You really have to have the Holy Spirit working in you because you make all kinds of decisions, church decisions. And so you need that Holy Spirit so it can guide you to be wise and make the, just like uh, 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 Solomon. You have to be wise in order to do that. Because now you, you are one of the top leaders in the body of Christ as an administrator. And, and look at, uh, 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 um, what's his name, Judah? Look at Judah. Judah was an administrator of Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 cabinet, but look how miserable he led. Uh, uh, he worked in, in in Jesus' cabinet. He was all about money. Now, as administrator, you handle all the money too. You know where every dollar's going. You know where it's coming from too. So you can't get too involved in the money making process as a business person. You can't do that because then you're gonna make get so greedy. And I've seen many churches fall like that. The person in the church that they'll do all the money, they, they started making money, so they started taking from, stealing from, from, from the church. You see, 
This is what Judah did. All right. He didn't get to know Jesus. See, this is why he messed up because he didn't take the time out like Martha. I mean, Mary. He got to know Jesus. He stood at the feet of Jesus and got to, got everything came out of Jesus' mouth. Mary was there to suck it in. His apostle was there to suck it in. You see? But Judah wasn't. Judah was the only thing about money. Now, if you're going to be an administrator that's going to think about money all the time, how you can spend this dollar, how you can make this dollar, but you ain't you ain't giving no money out to the poor. No. Or you only give it out to your friends. You see? So this is you, that's why it's so important for the administrator to have the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Love God. Have a relationship with God. Because now you are now you have have the right attitude to sow into the kingdom of God. And then it says, uh, Paul mentions tongue last of all because it was a problem in the church at Corinth. He, want, he wanted to show that it was only one of many different gifts. Therefore, he spoke about other gifts first. Okay, verse thir uh, footnotes on verse 31. It says, this command seems to oppose what Paul says in verse 29 and 30. There he emphasizes the verity of gifts. And in verses 21 and 26, he shows how each person's gift are necessary for the rest of the Christian body. He is not saying that some people are more important than other people, but he will explain in chapter uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 through 25. That's where he really totally explains it in the chapter, in chapter, in the chapter 14. Okay, reading the whole chapter, yeah, yeah, read the whole chapter. If, if you go, read the whole chapter so you can be, get a better understanding. Which are the greatest gifts? They are those that benefit in the church. But the first but the first shows that no spiritual gift has any value. Listen at this without love. It has no spiritual value without love. And that's why he said, without love, you're nothing. You can have faith, you can have hope. But love, you ain't got no love. You ain't got nothing. And this is what he's trying to tell you. And uh, that's in the end of the footnote. But now I'm going to a scripture that God gave me that just, just it takes care of all these scriptures. Um, 27 through 31, it, it explains the whole, uh, uh, what you really need in, a, in the body of Christ. It just to totally um, puts it together. And this is a living sacrifice to God. Romans 12, 1 through 8. And then again, read the whole chapter. We're going to read this whole chapter. And um, I love this chapter. I live off of this chapter. And this is um, verse 1. I beseech you, brothers, brothers, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Number two says, and be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this. That's where you mess up. We're trying to conform ourselves to this world. We're trying to make the church like the world church, you see, wrong. That's a Pharisee's church. That's what the world church means. Pharisees, Sadducees. So we're not trying to do that. We're trying to make the church like Christ. The Godhead. An eternal, eternal now, heavenly foundation that's made by God and not man. Um, but but be ye transformed by the renewing of thy mind, of your mind, that ye make that ye may prove 
What is good? What is acceptable? What is perfect? And what the will of God is. That was in the King James Version. Now the New Living uh, Translation. I love to use these because it just brings everything uh, to clarity. And we need clarity here. Um, number one in the New Living Translation. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. I plead, give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will find acceptable this is truly the way to worship him. You, you hear what he just said? This is truly the way to worship God. When you live holy, huh? So that it would be acceptable and a perfect will of God. This is the way we worship God, by living the way Jesus asked us to live, by obeying what Jesus' commandments are, by loving one another. That is the commandment, the greatest commandment of, of all, is you love one another. Love God, love, one, love your neighbor, because on these two laws hang all the prophecies. And most of all, love your enemy. Then number two says, don't copy, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. We, we copy the behavior and the custom of this world too much. And the reason being because you don't know the truth. This is what this is what stuns us. When you don't know the truth, you get stunned. That's exactly right. So we must, must know the truth in order to obey. Uh, but let God transform you into a new into a new person. By changing your ways you think, by changing the way we think up here, then you will learn to know God's will for you. That's the only way. If we let God train, change our way of thinking, we'll know God then. I know because I'm going through it. I understand what he's saying now. This is why he gives me so many revelations about the word of God. is because I'm, I'm giving myself to him which is good and pleasing and perfect will of God. And then number three, and this is the rest of this is in the New Living Translation. And number three says, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give you, no, I give each of you uh, this warning. Now he gives you a warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. He's telling the church. He's telling the leaders. He's telling the congregation. Don't think you're better than you what you really are. Don't get above your own business now. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Evaluate yourself every day. Come on. We have to do that. We're not perfect. We're trying to we're striving to be perfect. Evaluate yourself. You need to. Don't just say, I ain't, I ain't sin. I don't sin. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Because you lie to yourself and everybody else. Measuring yourselves by the faith of God has given us. We measure ourselves through faith. Why? Trials, tri trials and tribulations we go through. Tests we go through. That's why. That's how we can that's how we can measure up our measure our faith. That God has given us, not going through these things. Don't get, don't, 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 <laughs> don't quit because the road, the, the, the road get a little tough, get a little bumpy. Don't quit, keep on going. Be a soldier. That's what soldiers do. When the going get tough, the tough get going, and they can, then they can, and they can get tougher if they have to because their mind, their mind has been taught how to get tougher. They have been in training. That's all we are. We're in training. 
we are in training to show to show our own self that we can do it. You see what I'm saying? We're the one that have to teach that have, God teaches us, but we're the one that have to um, let our own self know that we can do these things. God tells already and told us we can do it, but we have we are the one that has to sacrifice and 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 show our own self that we can do it with God's help. Uh, number four says, just as our bodies have many parts, here we go again. We talking about the parts, you know what? We already talked about that, and each part has a special function. Number five, so. <coughs> So it is with Christ's body. Here we go. We talking about Christ's body again. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. We belong to each other. We all have the same spirit. We all have Jesus Christ. We all belong to God. So we all should be thinking alike, acting alike, just like the apostles. They thought alike. They acted alike. And they look just like Christ when you met them. They look like Christ when you left them. And then when you saw them again, they were still like Christ. They hadn't changed. They had not taken up the world with a point of view. But they always kept God's point of view. And this is what's so important. Number six says, In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with, with as much faith as God has given you. Whatever gift God has given you, do it to the best of your ability. Don't be afraid to step out and, and, and take control because the Holy Ghost is guiding you and teaching you. Just do it. Um, number seven, if, if your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you if you are a teacher, teach well. If you, if, if your gift is to encourage others, encourage well. Be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership abilities, do it well. Take responsibility seriously. Take this gift that God has given you, whatever it may be, but take it serious. And if you are a gift, you know, if you have a gift for showing kindness, to others, do it great, great, uh, uh, great, greatly. Do it to the best of your knowledge. Do it to the best of, of the power that God has invested in you. But do it gladly. Be happy about it. In other words, be happy about all these gifts that God has given you. But most of all, the scripture says, Jesus says, uh, all these miracles and things, these gifts that I give you, he was talking to his disciples when they went out and and um, he, when Jesus sent them out to heal the blind and teach to teach, teach his world to the to the to out in the in the, in, the, in, the, in the town, they came back with oh we did this we healed this in your name we mm. so God you know what Jesus told them? wait a minute don't be happy about that. Be happy that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's what you be happy. In heaven, your name is written. That's what you need to be happy about. Don't be happy about you casting out demons. Because that's not what it's about. That's just a gift that I gave you to take care of my business. But be happy because you're working for me. Be happy because you're my friend and not my servant. That's what I want you to be happy about. That your name is in heaven. Your father, 
God has your name. Um, number nine, don't just, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly in what's good. Number 10, love each other with uh, uh, genuine affection. Let it be genuine. Your love, people know when your love is genuine. And take delight in honoring each other. Mm. Instead of talking about one another. I'm guilty of that sometimes too. And God breaks me down and let me know, oh, oh, can't do that, can't do that. I'm teaching you right now, son. Speak good about people. Yes, Lord. Number 11 says, never be lazy. Never be lazy with God's gift. Don't be lazy with it. Remember the talents? He gave one, what? One talent. He gave another five talents, three talents. And then when he left and came back, one hid his talent. Uh, the first one had five talents. He doubled his. And then the other guy that hid his talent, God gave it to somebody else. Don't let God do that to you. Use his talent and use it well. Now, where was I? Never be lazy. That's right. But work hard and serve the Lord expeditiously. Uh, number 12 says, rejoice in, rejoice in our con Com rejoice, in our, rejoice in our confidence and hope. Be patient in, in trouble and keep on praying. And also number 13, when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to, to, eager to um, practice hospitality. Number 14 says, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Um, number 15. Let me go back to number 9. It says, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. No, that's not the one. Not the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back to number one, where it says, This is truly the way to worship God. Let me take you down to a scripture. Forgot to give you that. And this scripture is coming out of John 15, 13 through 17. It says, Love has no one. Love has no one than this. Okay, number 13 says, Greater love has no man. Than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. 14. Ye are my friend. If you do, if you do whatever I command you. Number 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord does. But I have called you friend. This is when you become a friend now. For if you start doing what God asks you to do, now you become a friend. Now you show your loyalty to him. For all things that, that, that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever ye shall ask in the father in my in my name he may give it to you 17 says these things i command you that you love one another that's the greatest gift of all that's the greatest commandment of all now let's go back to 15 
Um, it says, be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. 16, live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. 17 says, never pay back evil with more evil. Don't think in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. 18 says, don't all, no, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. 19 says, dear friends, never take re uh, revenge. Uh, live, no, leave that to the, to the righteousness, anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, said the Lord. He said, oh, I'll pay them. I, I see what they're doing. I'll get them. Don't you worry about it. You keep doing what I ask you to do. I'll take care of them. And in past, in the Old Testament, New Testament, he did just that. Number 20. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. If doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their head. Number 21 says, don't let evil conquer you. But conquer evil by doing good. This is what God is saying to the Corinthian church and saying to you as well. Do good. Let good be your foundation. Just like his was his foundation. He did good to mankind. And he's asking you to do the same. Follow in my footsteps. That I followed in God's footsteps. That's all he's saying. Paul said the same thing. You follow in my footsteps as I have followed in Christ's footsteps. And that's a true leader of the church. A true leader. Once you have a relationship and is ready to obey God. My fellow and brothers and sisters, I pray that you got a lot out of this. Because truly I have, I really have. It has made me a new person inside and out. And I thank you for just taking out the time to listen to what God's word is saying. And that you can learn something from these lessons. And I'm praying that God will open up your mind, open up your ears, and open up your eyes so that you can have a better understanding. And that I pray in Jesus' name that I bind any enemy that comes to your mind and try to block anything that he has to say. And I command it to be loose right now in the name of Jesus. Be blessed, my people. God loves you. I love you. Until we see each other again, God bless.